Good morning, Secretary Teodoro. Uh, good morning, Sec. Daphne. Good morning to our friends sa uh, Malacanang Press Corps at sa lahat po na nanonood ngayong umaga. Good morning po sa kanilang lahat. Okay, you may give a few statements. Well, unang-una, nagpapasalamat po uli ako sa ating Pangulo para sa kanyang tiwala sa akin at sa lahat po ng nagbigay ng uh, magagandang mensahe, ng encouragement at... Uh, sa lahat, sa aking pamilya, nagpapasalamat din ako sa kanilang patuloy na suporta sa akin. At uh, itong trabaho na ito ay hamon na malaki na sana magtulungan, uh, magtulungan po tayo ng masinsinan because uh, uh, national security is everybody's business, no? not only uh, government's business. Pero uh, usapin ng lahat po ito. Would you like to take questions from the, the oh, press sure, corps? Sure. Okay, let's sure. start. Maricel Halili, TV5. Hi, sir. Magandang umaga po. Magandang umaga, sir, Maricel. Opo, simulan ko lang po dun sa usapin ng peace talks dahil naglabas po ng pahayag yung National Democratic Front saying na open daw po uli sila na makipag-usap sa pamahalaan kung bukas din yung gobyerno tungkol dito. Ano po yung tugon natin doon? Are we open for another peace talks with NDFP? My personal position is no. Uh, matagal ko ng position yan nung araw pa. Uh, and I think that is the position of uh, the security cluster as of this time. No? Dahil uh, unang-una, bukas loob naman ang, ang, ang gobyerno na magbalik sa fold ng law. Kaya uh, ang lahat ng mga uh, dating uh, kasapi ng CPP, NT, NPA, NDF, Nandiyan na ang OPAPRO na handa na tulungan sila at i-rehabilitate. Malaki ang naitulong ng NTFLCAC uh, na i-dismantle ang mga natitirang mga tinatawag na front organis uh, fronts na natitira sa bansa. At uh, sa tingin ko, ang uh, peace talks ay... Uh, sa akin sa version ng ating proseso demokratiko, no? uh, pwede naman natin pag-usapan yung mga issue na yan sa tamang uh, uh, forum. Yan ay ang kongreso. Uh, at uh, magsumanib sila sa legitimate political process. Hindi naman bawal ang CPP eh. Ka, uh, uh, Republic Act 1700 has been repealed long ago. Pero yung indirect at direct support sa armadong pakikibaka, yan ang problema. So there is, the, to me, there is no such thing as, it's an oxymoron, ano, yung legal front. Walang legal na front. Ang front ay illegal. No? So if, if that's the case, sir, how do we intend to deal with the CPP and PA? I, I, I mean, ideologically, to me, it's a farce. So uh, 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 what we intend to do is to convince those that are still continuing, whatever business they're continuing, which is against the law, to come back and join the fold of law and join hands for national development. No? Mm -hmm. And as a political party, they can register as a legitimate political party just as long as there is evidence that there is a total disavowal of resort to subversive means in order to gain political power. All of these theories, Uh, Marxism, etc. These are political theories, and the end is to gain political power. Now, at the end of the day, it's people who run things, and so although hidden behind theory, nakatago sa likod ng teorya, tao rin yan eh. So, ano ang motivasyon ng tao na yan? It's to gain political power, and be behind that, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-divine uh, kung ano talagang intensyon ngayon. Para patas lahat, halalan. Legitimate party, hindi po all out war. Ah, oo. oo. O, legitimate party. Yeah. Okay. Sir, sorry, pahabol po. Meron lang po kasi mga random posts sa social media na parang nakakakita daw ng mga fighter jets sa Manila. I don't know if this is true or not, <laughs> pero baka lang may detalye kayo. <laughs> hindi, wala, wala, wala ako na. Oh. O, wala akong na babalita na gano'n. Baka naman may insayo lang for Independence Day. Uh, no? Baka lang. No? I, 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 wala, ang, wala ako natatanggap na report na ganyan. No? Salamat, okay. Thank you, Maricel. Nestor Corrales, Inquirer. 
Sir, you mentioned it was your personal position. Is this also the position of the president and what was his uh, directive? I have to consult uh, regarding that because the only consultation I had with the president, first and foremost, is to speed up the MUP, of which I will receive total briefings mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in the coming days as to what progress has already been done. And I understand significant progress has already been done towards getting a consensus. No? And I have to commend Secretary Galvez for, uh, and the economic team for the stellar work that they have done. I will put in definitely my two cents worth regarding my views on the sustainability of whatever scheme is given, giving due regard also to the invaluable contributions of those uh, who served our country selflessly. You know. Uh, however, we must also look at the big picture that the financial sustainability of any uh, government-funded enterprise must not result to in the uh, detriment to the detriment of the financial position of government. So we we'll have to find a healthy balance, and I believe that uh, our men, women in uniform are not averse to the fact that they have to contribute to national government, just as long as they see that at the end of their tours of duty, number one, they will be taken care of. Number two, that the fund or whatever uh, they have to participate in is transparently, professionally, and competently managed and not mismanaged. Uh, he, uh, also, the military is still a very attractive uh, proposition for a young person to have a career because there are non-monetary benefits that you can get like free medical care, continuous skills training, educational opportunities and the like. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, what we want to make sure also is that they are re-employable because of their specific skill sets in the private sector after. And uh, thus, one of really my programs, as you may have heard yesterday, uh, I start first with my own agency, the Department of National Defense, that we need to upgrade uh, our skill sets in the organization. Uh, I le learned yesterday we only have a plantilla of about 320 or so. And the fill-up rate is quite low because of the unattractive salary rates. Can you imagine we're managing a stakeholder base of almost a million pesos and 125 billion or so assets under management? Can't do that with 320 people, you know, and without capital outlay. So I really would want to focus on organizational development on a sustainable basis to motivate our people, both in all agencies of the government, of, of, under my watch, and to develop specific educational and skill sets. Because uh, as you know, your journalists, a lot of happenings, uh, a lot of things are evolving. And a lot of challenges are evolving. We have to create a security structure that, that does not only mean the armed forces, but also the civilian managers, uh, the pre resource managers, the program managers, the lawyers, that will be able to address the unforeseen challenges that we may face in the future. Okay. Joe Banahan, ABS-CBN News Online. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Joe. Hi. Good morning, uh, um, <laughs> Sir, uh, you're an alumnus of the University of the Philippines. Yes. Po. Sir, are you open to reviewing yung DND and UP Accord? No, I, I, I'm not anymore. That has been a policy already done by my predecessor, and I don't want to reverse the policy. But that does not mean to say that I'm not mindful of the autonomy of the University of the Philippines. And I urge everybody to be respectful of that without need of any MO, M, MOA. Actually, when I was Secretary of Defense, I did not also agree to a lot of zones of peace entered into by my own local government, actually, uh, in the province of Tarlac, because, I mean, these are used as safe havens. No? That being said, I admonish also and I encourage all law enforcement officers to be really mindful of uh, the balance between freedom of expression and uh, 
uh, and uh, protecting the peace. No, I mean, look. What happened in the change of chancellorship? There was some ruckus there. The military didn't get involved, or the police didn't get involved. But also, in parang last year, uh, parang the Senate sabi po dito sa isang press release, Senate is set to institutionalize the agreement between the UP and DND. So, wala po kayong plano na wala support dito. Ngayon, kung isa batas yan ng, ng ating legislators at pinirbahan ng presidente, di susunod tayo, pero wala, hindi ko susuportahan. Kasi, hindi lang naman UP eh. Bakit bukod, bukod tangi ang, ang ating uh, universidad? Nandyan din naman ang ibang universidad na public institutions din. At ito naman, ang, in, for fairness sake, hindi lang naman ang UP ang pinag re ng uh, mga insurgents. Marami pang universidad na po focus lamang ang UP sapagkat it's the uh, most prominent uh, university of the Philippines, actually. No? Okay. Kathy Valente, Manila Times. <laughs> yes, sir. Good morning. Sir, the president morning. yesterday uh, instructed po uh, Filipino ambassadors to look for uh, non-traditional partners to po in terms of trade, security, and defense. Ano-ano pa pong mga bansa ang ating tinitignan para mas mapalakas pa pong ating defense capabilities? Uh, sa ngayon, uh, aside from ang ating uh, treaty ally na Estados Unidos, natural nakikipag-usap tayo. Alam naman natin yan sa Israel, sa Japan, sa Korea, at iba't ibang uh, Sweden recently. Nakapirma si Secretary Galvez ng MOU sa Shangri-La Dialogue with Sweden. At... Uh, I, I think the marching order is to look for a proper fit wherever, no? whatever serves our needs and uh, whatever will jibe with our national security, territorial integrity, and interoperability with our present complement. Okay, Ivan Myrina, GMA7. Secretary, in a previous interview this morning, you said that we should de-escalate tension in the West Philippine Sea, not just with China, but with all other claimant states. How do you see this happening, sir, and how exactly do, do you intend to do that? Uh, hindi de-escalation, actually. Uh, I, I meant de-confliction. Kasi ang, de uh, oh, oh, ang, ang de-escalation, wala sa atin yun. Eh. Hindi naman tayo aggressor. Bawal tayong maging aggressor under the Constitution. Yung deconfliction as much as possible, yan ay balanse eh, ng pagtatayo sa lahat ng uh, uh, gustong umabuso sa ating territorial integrity coupled with deconfliction. Kung pwedeng mag-usap, mag-usap. Pero merong, merong hindi pwedeng i-cross ang uh, Secretary of National Defense. Hindi natin pwedeng i-bargain away ang ating teritoryo sa kahit anuman usapin. At sa ganang, at sa, sa, sa usapin na yan, uh, nasabi ko rin, uh, Ivan, mga kababayan, na ang pagtatatag ng ating credible deterrence, ang pagtatatag ng ating kakayahan na ipagtanggol ang ating sarili ay sarili nating usapin. Kung sino man ang ipartner natin, wala nang pakialam yung ibang mga tao dyan. Dahil ito ay paulit-ulit na sinasabi ng ating Pangulo, ay for purely defensive purposes at deterrent purposes. Walang malakas na bansa sa mundo na hindi malakas ang kanyang sandatang lakas at civil defense din. Ano? Kakayahan na ipagtanggol ang kanyang sarili. Kaya kung tayo ay sasabihan na kaya tayo ay nagpapatatag ng national defense dahil polisiya ito ng ibang bansa, bigyan naman tayo ng karampatang respeto na kaya natin mag-isip para sa ating sarili. Ano? Okay. Go ahead. Secretary Alexis Romero of the Philippine Star. Uh, may concerns dati regarding yung sa pension reforms na d there might be uh, early retirement ng maraming mga enlisted personnel because they want they are concerned about yung reforms and they want to benefit from the old system. They want to ensure na yung dating benefits na nakukuha nila eh makukuha pa rin nila bago pa mag-implement ng reforma. Are you confident that you will be able to avert yung ganong concern na maraming magre-retire over the proposed pension reforms? Sa tingin ko, kasi, I mean, it's a, it, it's a matter of uh, getting an amount now 
without the, uh, the continuing non-monetary benefits that you will enjoy in your career path, in your career pattern. Kung mag invest nga tayo sa skills uh, uh, upgrading, sa healthcare, hindi lamang ng ating mga kasuduluhan, kung hindi pamilya, and other non-monetary opportunities, palagi ko may iiwan sila. May iwan sila at lalo na kung makikita nila na ang sakripisyo natin lahat no, ay magiging sa, sa kab, uh, kabutihan ng lahat. Kasi, okay, uh, wag natin sulbahin ang problema. Alright? Anong mangyayari? Magkakaroon tayo ng mas malaking deficit, magkakaroon ng inflation, bababa ang balor ng ating pera, tataas ang bilihin. So, tama rin lahat eh. No? So I think it's a matter of explaining the uh, the uh, necessity, no, uh, of introducing. Sa aking palagay, dahil galing din naman ako sa financial sector, hindi naman biglaan mangyayari to eh. Mababawasan lamang ang ang dapat na pagdudugo eh, eh ka nga ng ating gobyerno hanggang sa ma-self-sustain na itong sistema na to. At alam din natin, katulad din ng pagtatanim ng halaman, alagaan mo to eh, uh, palalakihin mo to bago ka umani. No? So, hindi naman uh, bingi ang uh, gobyerno sa ganon na ito ay hindi biglaan na ipapataw tapos biglaan na lang babawasan ka ng ganito. Kung hindi, meron din transitioning ito dapat. No? Follow up lang, Secretary. Kasi previous administrations have tried to pass or push for bills reforming the pension system. I remember panahon ni President Noy Noy Aquino, meron yan. Panahon ni President Duterte, even may, naging priority bills na yan. Ngayon, priority bill uli siya ng Marcos administration. Ano po kaya yung meron ngayon, tingin nyo, maiiba at may push ito? Kasi marami na pong nagtangkang gawin ito, pero hindi naman po naipasa sa Kongreso. Uh, palagay ko, naiiba ay ang unang marching order na nga ng Pangulo sa akin na dapat uh, makipag-ugnayan na nga sa economic cluster na makapasa ng bill sa lalong uh, sa agad na panahon upang uh, matigil ang pag-hemorrhage. Hindi mapapara bigla-bigla pero mababawasan. No, no? So, so we can use the funds for other things and we can also build a stable and sustainable Uh, retirement plan for our men and women in uniform. May dalawang prinsipyo lang na gusto kong idagdag doon. Kailangan ang pondo ay naturally para palakihin mo to mag-risk risk reward yan eh. Kung hindi ka mag-risk, hindi lalaki, walang growth. Ngunit, kinakailangan uh, i-observe nito ang prudential standards eka nga sa banking, no? Uh, ang, ang financial sector alam ito na kailangan may governance standards, prudential standards, tamang risk management, tamang audit, transparency, at ang mga nagpapatakbo nito kailangan ay uh, sasa ilalim sa fit and proper rule, eka nga ng BSP. Kailangan may uh, requisite experience and responsibility ito. And it goes also, ha, eto sasabihin ko na hindi gagawin ito ng mga tao na libre. You have to pay for experience, you have to pay for integrity. At the end of the day, uh, you get professional managers, you compensate and motivate them properly, and you'll get good results. But you make their pay uh, uh, with due uh, 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 watch standards, no? In conformity, uh, their pay commensurate to performance. No? Ngayon, ang gusto kong pag-aralan at maitanong, kung magtatatag tayo nitong ganitong pondo, uh, pwede ba natin patakbuhin based on mga standard na istrikto ng Insurance Commission, ng uh, BSP, at other financial institutions, at ito ba ay sasalungat sa audit code ng COA? Kasi sa pag-experience ko, kung susunod tayo sa COA, makaluma yung audit code, maraming ipagbabawal at baka may mangyari. Kaya ito ay dapat i-deconflict. Eh, ka nga. No? Okay. Mervyn Vince Lopez, Manila Standard. 
Sir, ibalik ko lang dun sa South China Sea. Um, may mga reports po na recently may mga foreign ships na namamataan sa may Pag-asa Islands. Uh, are you willing, sir, to position more gray ships in our West Philippine Sea boundary, sir? Or I, I can't give you an answer now kasi whole of government approach nga yan. Uh, uh, I'll have to consult with the uh, National Security Advisor uh, with the Department of Foreign Affairs and uh, we, we have to come out with a concerted plan of action uh, uh, with this. Hindi ko masasagot sa sarili kong opinion to kasi napaka importanteng bagay na national security. Okay. okay. We're good. Before we go, uh, maybe some closing words from you, Secretary Teodoro. You had touched on many uh, issues that were asked by the uh, Malacanang Press Corps here. You were formerly uh, also a DND Secretary in another time, and the world has changed so much, as you mentioned. We have climate change directly affecting our country. Maybe you, we can have some final words from you um, in your first press con here in, uh, with uh, Malacanang. Thank you very much, uh, Daphne, at sa lahat po ng mga kasama natin dito sa Malacanang Press Corps. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar faces and it's nice to meet new ones. Uh, I think this my essential job too. Ang pinaka-importante trabaho ko ay i-articulate at i-communicate ang essentials ng national defense sa lingwahe na klaro na maintindihan ng ating mga kababayan. Kasi kailangan po ang isang bansa na mag-uugnayan sa ilalim ng isang mensahe. So, nagpapasalamat po ako sa inyong lahat sa pagkakataon na maipahayag ang aking mga isipin tungkol sa mga katanungan po ninyo. At uh, uh, nabigyan nyo rin po ako ng pagkakataon na maipaliwanag ang trabaho ng isang Secretary of National Defense. no Kasi... Ang, ang common conception po ng ating mga kababayan ay militar kaagad. Hindi po. Uh, presidente, chief of staff. Ang secretary of national defense ay advisor ng presidente, alter ego ng presidente, at service provider po sa limang ahensya. Kaya dyan po tayo tututok. Maraming salamat, salamat po. po, Secretary Teodoro, and thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Good afternoon.